Boys, it is that time. Four times a year, PoE players get to experience essentially Christmas. Well, 2021 maybe had three of those, or maybe even two for some people, because there's a couple leagues that weren't so good. But either way, we have got a good league, most likely, coming up within 24 hours of me recording this video. Siege of the Atlas 3.17 is essentially here. And as always, I like to go over a list of builds that are popping off in the community. A lot of good content creators made a bunch of really good builds. People are super hyped about these, and I want to talk about the builds that I think are going to mostly define the meta of 3.17. Now, if you're enjoying the content or these videos help you out, make sure to give it a like and also make sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to get stay up to date with all the latest content. And do remember that when the league launches, I will be live at twitch.tv slash big ducks, which you should go follow, by the way. Come hang out with your boy and all the other duck boys on league start and we should have a pretty good time. All right, boys. So we're just going to go over my list. We made this over on stream at twitch.tv slash big ducks. And we just went through deep dove into some POBs, made sure everything was adding up and everything looked good and made a list of all the people who made bills that are probably going to be relatively popular in this league, aka meta builds. Talked about some of the downfalls, talked about some of the things that they're good at, so we're going to go through this list right now. First off, you know it, you've probably seen a bunch of videos about it, Explosive Arrow Ballistas. This is a totem build, a totem build that is going to be pushed by Palstron, Crouching Tuna, as well as Zai. Zai is the guy who made the POV for Zizarin's video. There are a couple things to keep in mind when you are playing this build. You have to be careful that this build needs a lot of tertiary stats. It needs to make sure that you don't do a lot of stuff, because you can brick the build very easily. There are a ton of videos made by Palstron and Tuna that are talking about all these different things. They suggest that you go and watch them before you choose this build. Things like you have to make sure you have enough ignite chance, that your accuracy is up to snuff, you can't have fire damage on your gear like added fire damage, your attack speed needs to be proper, you need to make sure that you don't have any pierce or chain. There's so many things that are going to potentially destroy the build if you do them wrong. Also, this build has basically no recovery layers. Um, You can get some regen and such through like Hierophant and uh, some more defensive layers through through champion and such, but Blasks are pretty much the only way that you can recover your life as well as regen on this build. There isn't very much else to speak of. Mana issues are something that might plague a few players. This is covered through like mana regen as well as maybe a mana flask, but and I think uh, Tuna does use Vol Clarity on his build as well whenever you're just placing down all your ballistas before a boss. The defensive layers of the build are good. It is extremely tanky, just has a couple issues with recovery sometimes. The play style on this build is a little bit rough. It is a totem build and there is some delay between like like using your ability and the damage coming out. So make sure that you like totem builds. Maybe go test out a totem build real quick in standard or something before the league actually begins because you may not like it. And it's probably not a new player friendly build. If you are extremely new to the game, this is the kind of build that has like a lot of stats that you need to use. It's got a couple different transitions. It's not really a new player friendly build in my opinion. But if you're looking for a build that is absolutely excellent, but might require a little bit more brain and a little bit more time thinking about all the different decisions and stuff that you have to make, Explosive Vera Ballista should be really solid. Seismic Traps is the next build on this list. This is one of the premier bossing builds. It's been really good all the way since last league. Um, I have a video guide of this, Path of Math has a video guide of this, as well as Local Hall. Our builds are all relatively similar, so make sure you go check out all of them. And then there is also Zai slash Lighty's version, which is like a poison variant for hardcore. The poison variant is better for hardcore, or if you are pushing for like a mid-game type build, so like a medium race or something like that, where you need to push a little bit further into endgame than just like the first boss. But as you start to scale the damage later and later and later and later, it is better to go with the standard Fizz or Crit version that um, myself, Path of Math, as well as Local Hall use. The build has ridiculous boss damage. There are a lot of people who are saying things like, oh yeah, Seismic Trap is, is nerfed, we don't know how bad the nerf is, we pretty much do know how bad the nerf is. Everyone that I've talked to that's actually played Seismic Trap is just assuming that every wave is only going to hit one circle. And even if that's the case, the damage is still extremely good. You can scale this build up to getting like almost a million average damage on each one of those waves. And you can do anywhere from like five to 10 waves. The damage is fine. I'm not worried about it at all. No one really scaled AOE. I don't know why people are saying, oh yeah, everyone scaled AOE. There were a couple builds that were abusing AOE, but the vast majority of them did not. They got the AOE node from the Ascendancy and then there's like one AOE trap node in the trap wheel and that's pretty much it. Boss damage is still really good. The clear is fine on this build, nothing wrong with the clear. The move speed is not so fast though. This isn't a clear build, but it can clear quite well. 
One thing about this build is that if it does get popular, the gear pieces can get rather expensive early on, particularly cold iron points. You don't need cold iron points, but they are very good, so keep that in mind. I would say that you can get cold iron points pretty well through Expedition, you know, gambling through Gwen and things like that. The play style, damage can be a bit delayed, and bosses that move around frequently can be really frustrating for some players. So there is a chance that a lot of the new bosses might jump around all over the place like crazy, and if they do, there's probably gonna be some people who are frustrated with this play style because seismic traps, you load them down on the ground, they do their damage in an area, and if the boss is just jumping around all over the place like Cirrus or Maven, gonna kinda be a little bit of a problem for those people. And with lots of seismic traps, there is a decent amount of visual clarity problem. Problems. If you have like four of those traps out and you're just going constantly, it's kind of hard to see. Build is also insanely tanky. There are no problems with defensives on this build. It's got good recovery, good defensive layers, um, evasion, armor, all kinds of good stuff. So no worries about that on this build. Next build is going to be Spectral Helix. Um, there are a variety of different versions of this. There is a poison version that both Jungrone and Tripolar Bear are working on. There is the Elemental Deadeye version that Jungrone put out, and then there is the Impale version. I know that Alkaiser played a Fizz Impale two-handed champion version, and then I know that Matt Lighty is working on like a one-hand shield max res version for, um, for champion. The major bonus that you get for the champion version is that you can use Call of Steel, which makes the clear significantly more consistent. However, I do feel that the poison version, as well as the elemental version, the Deadeye version, probably will scale a little bit easier and might be a little bit better early on, but the clear on the Fizz version, a little bit more consistent. Now, the thing about this build, Spectral Helix is really good, but but the play style is you you either love it or you hate it. A lot of people hate it. Give this a try first, because if you hate it, you're really gonna be upset with yourself later if you don't do it. Also, it has a pay to win skill MTX. Literally, when you use a claw or a dagger on this build, it's like impossible to see your attack. Actually impossible. The MTX makes it possible to see your attack. It's it's literally pay to win, not, not even a joke at this point. Like GGG is legitimately griefing us with this MTX, it's insane. Some smaller bosses can be a little frustrating and bosses that are like in small environments and you know, the it bounces in wrong ways can be a little bit frustrating as well. Something that you will have to learn as you play the skill more and more. And clear on some of the versions, like I said before, can be spotty. Poison does have Plague Bearer. The Impale version has Call of Steel. The Elemental version does not have as many clear fixing things, but it is still pretty solid. Overall, I think this is one of the better builds, but it unfortunately has a terrible playstyle for a lot of people. Skeleton Mages is probably the premier minion build this league. There's going to be two of them. We'll talk about the other one here in a moment. Almost every single one of these POVs is like within 95% of each other. I checked myself, I checked Gazi, Von Victons, Balor Mage, and K Gaming. They are all almost exactly the same. It's like left side of the tree, you take almost all the same exact nodes. There are some minor differences in like cluster jewel choices and like the placement of cluster jewels and life nodes and armor nodes and things like that, but they're all pretty much exactly the same. The only real difference is that for the most part, people are recommending that you level with Absolution. K is recommending that you level with her minion army build, which is a little bit different. So the leveling process is gonna be different on Ks in comparison to maybe the rest of these. The one thing that you do need to know about this particular build is that it is going to require two very specific items to function properly. However, I know a lot of people are worried about this, but you can play Absolution. It's almost the same exact build, legitimately. Very similar early gear, very, very similar skill tree, almost not different at all. And then when you gather up the currency to buy these items, then you can swap into it. Those two items are a Dead Reckoning Jewel. This is like the item that actually allows you to summon Skeleton Mages. And then there is the Medium Cluster with Blessed Rebirth. You need this so that the Skelly Mages don't die. Now, major downside here. It's a minion build. If you don't like minion builds, uh, you're not gonna have a good time. You gotta keep specters alive, you gotta keep zombies alive, golems, all that kind of stuff. You have to manage all those minions, buff them, that kind of thing. If you don't like that, you're probably not gonna have fun with this build. And it is a very heavy screen clutter build. If you go watch my video, whenever you use Vol summon skeletons, it's literally the entire screen is just skeletons. They're everywhere. And that's a good and a bad thing. I mean, if you have a bad GPU, then it's probably gonna explode. And the clear speed can be a little bit slow. The build doesn't move super fast. It's got good clear ability, but it just doesn't move very fast. And you having to spawn new skeletons every time you wanna move to a different area and clear more, kind of a little bit annoying for clear. However, for bosses and encounters, as I'm trying to call them, trying to key like, you know, coin that word for this, things like simulacrum, blight maps, things like that 
where you're in one place and you're fighting a bunch of waves of enemies and things, this build is very, very good for that. And Animate Guardian is very good on this build, and I hate Animate Guardian. I think it's a terrible ability, but you know, it is what it is. It's very good. Next ability is going to be Absolution. This is the build that Crip said was good. Nobody believed him at first. I was like, okay, okay, old man. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. But it's actually pretty good. Now, I personally didn't make a guide for this because there are a couple little things that I'll talk about that are pretty annoying about this build later on. But as a day one minion build, this is probably the best day one minion build that there is. You should play this one and then transfer over into whatever other minion build, like summon skeleton mages and such. This build is very, very, very good on day one. Now, the downside to Absolution is that the playstyle can be extremely frustrating on bosses sometimes. This was one of two reasons why I did not make this guide. The way that this ability works is that you will apply a debuff to enemies, right? You apply that debuff to enemies, and then if they die, they will spawn the Sentinels of Absolution. Alternatively, on rare and unique mobs, you have a 25% chance upon hitting them to spawn a Sentinel of Absolution. You can miss that 25% chance like 10 times in a row, and you just sit there and you do no damage, and the boss just hits you, and you die, and you cry about it because you can't get the absolutions to spawn. It's really frustrating sometimes. It doesn't happen super often, but it does happen sometimes, and it's a little bit frustrating. The second thing is that Spell Echo is amazing for this build, and it feels terrible. Like, it feels horrible. When you try to put Spell Echo onto this build, you are going to be stuck in place essentially constantly, and you can't interrupt a Spell Echo cast. That's probably my main criticism with this. If Spell Echo was a gem that you could interrupt in the middle of the cast and start moving, there would be no problem with this build. But you can't, and it feels really bad. Now, one big thing about this is that if you want to scale the damage on this build much later on, you do have to use some interesting items, uh, the main one being Doriani's, which makes it so that any enemies that are nearby you share your resistance, and you try to get as much negative lightning resistance as you can, so that scales the damage that they take. It is a little bit complicated, and there's some interesting pieces of gear that you gotta use, so do be aware of that. You don't need to do this, but it is the way to scale the most damage out of the build by far. Player speed isn't amazing, um, you don't move around too fast, you are limited by the Absolution Sentinels and how well their AI is doing. Their AI is pretty good, if I'm gonna be honest with you, but they're still minions, and you're not going to have those instant, you're not gonna be able to kill specific what enemies that you want to at any given time. And once again, it's a minion build. You got to keep the boys alive and anime guardian is good, but you know, I hate using the ability. Next build is going to be poisonous concoction. Um, Asmodeus as well as Pelseron have video guides for this. I thought that there were more, but I couldn't really find any right when I was doing it. Um, there probably is more. I'm sure there are ones that you can find out there. But the big thing here is choosing between occultist and pathfinder. The thing about it is, is that I think out of these two, if you're just looking for the better version of the build, I do believe that it's Pathfinder by a pretty large margin. However, if you are planning on transitioning to an occultist build later anyways, or you're planning to transition to a different witch build later anyways, the Occultist is actually better in early maps. The clear that you can get out of the Occultist is insane. I did some leaks start testing with specifically the Occultist, and the speed at which this build clears maps is disgusting. Occultist pops and just being able to pop up Plague Bearer and shield charge around constantly and just kill everything at, at max shield charge speed is kind of ridiculous. The problem with this build as a whole is that it doesn't really scale insanely well. It's pretty good at most things, like it can do decent boss damage, and the Occultist has insanely good clear, but the Pathfinder has okay clear, but it just doesn't really scale into the very end game super well. This is a build that I'm kind of torn on. I was going to make a video guide about this, but... It just ended up, I couldn't, I couldn't do it justice. I couldn't figure out an angle that I felt was best, and I just kind of left it to other people. But as I said, Occultus has better clear, Pathfinder scales a little bit better. The league start on Occultus is rough. It really is. You don't get access to the main gem of the build on which, and you have to get it either from the library, or you're going to have to buy it from someone or get it from a friend. The build is significantly smoother if you can get this gem at 12 and level with it. Something that you can do is you can make a ranger, level up to 12 with Caustic Arrow, make sure that you grab all the gems that you'll need, and then mule those over 
to an occultist or a witch rather, and then use that and level with Caustic Arrow from level one on the occultist or witch. I'm going to keep saying occultist most likely, so forgive me. And then just level with poisonous concoction from 12 on. Alternatively, you can do what most people do and just level with any other early leveling build and swap at like 30 something. But I found that in my testing, if you're going to do the occultist, it feels way better to level as poisonous concoction from level 12. The bossing is kind of weak on the build. It is a clear build. As I said before, Pathfinder is a little bit better. Falls off relatively hard in late reds. Occultist falls off very hard in late reds. You can clear very well, but bossing is pretty rough. Um, it is a poison build, so the playstyle is going to be a little bit different from what most people are expecting. You have to build up your poisons, and then the vast majority of your clear is done through Plague Bearer, not actually Poisonous Concoction. So you need to be good at managing the levels of that and like turning it on reactivating it, those kinds of things. This build does need a decent amount of tertiary stats, meaning like attack speed, accuracy and such to make sure it feels good. And if you have really poor flask management, you'll do a lot less damage on bosses. The problem here is that you need an active available life flask to have the build kind of dip from to be able to do maximum damage. You also can't use instant life flasks because those do significantly less healing to you and life flasks are one of your main ways to recover on this build. So if you're one of those people who just kind of smashes your keyboard constantly and just hits flask all the time, probably not this build because you're never going to have flash charges. The Pathfinder is a little bit better with this because you'll be getting flash charges back consistently. But if you really are just like a flask charge keyboard abuser, you may not want to play this build. And that is going to be it for the video. So I hope that you guys have fun in the new league. It should be a lot of fun. And do remember to come hang out with me over at twitch.tv slash big ducks. I will be live for league start and probably streaming a lot all the way up to however long it takes for us to get bored. So make sure to come hang out with your boy. Let me know what build you are going to be playing down in the comments. I'm curious to see uh, which builds are most popular, what people are really thinking about playing. And remember that if you enjoy this content, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that little notification bell for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I will see you guys in 3.17 Siege of the Atlas.